Before his role was taken over by Osiris, Anubis was the first Egyptian funerary god, who ruled over the dead. He was the terrifying canine god who presided over the mummification of bodies and guarded burials. In the ancient Egyptian religion, the god of mortuaries was often depicted as a seated black jackal, or as a man with the head of a jackal or wild dog, usually in a lying down or crouching position with tall pointed ears and a bushy long tail. The color of Anubis's fur has been interpreted as both the black skin of a rotting corpse, and the black mud of a fertile farmland. He wears some sort of necklace, with magical connotations which has engraved writings on. Less often, he appears in human form with a canine head. A peculiar symbol of Anubis in the context of mortuary deity, is the Imiat fetish, which in ancient times, was identified with a certain primordial god. This object consists of the stuffed skin of a beheaded animal, dripping blood and tied by its tail to a pole, which rests in a pot. Anubis is also referred as Anpu, or Inpu, which roots of the name means royal child in the ancient Egyptian language. Inpu has the root of a word which literally means decay. These were the former names of this god, before the Greeks arrive in Egypt and change them into Anubis. The parentage of Anubis is quite confused, but the most popular notion seems to place him in the Old Kingdom as a son of Ra and Nephthys. But in the New Kingdom there's a story that said Osiris mistook the goddess Nephthys for his wife, Isis, and impregnated her, their child was Anubis. After that incident, Isis raised Anubis as her own son, the product of this accidental affair. Other accounts name the cat goddess, Bastet, or the cow goddess as his mother, and later texts identified his father to be Seth during the Middle Kingdom. But, Anubis finally came to be regarded as a son of Osiris, especially from the darker side of his character which was remembered in the epithet. The one who eats his father. Anubis consort, and female counterpart Anput, is often depicted as a pregnant and nursing jackal, and was sometimes considered to be the protector of Osiris. And together with her husband they had a child called, Kebeshe, whose name means cooling water. She is referred to as a serpent and related to the mummification ceremony, where she would fortify the corpse against corruption by giving water to the spirits of the dead while they waited for the mummification process to be complete. Most of Anubis's epithets link him with death and burial. He who is in the place of embalming. Anubis was related to mummification. By the end of the third millennium, Osiris had become the king of the dead. Anubis was incorporated into the Osiris myth as the god who invented mummification to preserve the corpse of Osiris. In fact, when the legend of Osiris emerged, it was said that after Osiris had been killed by his brother Seth, his organs were scattered all over Egypt, but were retrieved and given to Anubis. Anubis then became the chief guardian of the mummy of Osiris and a supporter of Isis and her son, Horus. Anubis' title, Master of Secrets, chiefly referred to the gruesome secrets of the embalming tent. He was especially associated with the bandaging of mummies and the ceremony known as the opening of the mouth ritual. The ancient Egyptians believed that in order for a person's soul to survive in the afterlife, it would need to have food and water. Thus, the opening of the mouth ritual was performed to give the mummy back, the senses it had enjoyed during its lifetime. In the Old Kingdom, Anubis judged the fate of the deceased, a role eventually taken over by Osiris. Out of respect for the god, Anubis stepped down from the position he held in the underworld, and let Osiris be the new ruler bestowing judgment upon the souls that were presented to him. However, Anubis kept his major role of watching over the dead. Anubis was perceived to superintend the embalming of kings and royalties in mortuaries, and the subsequent binding with linen bandages. His coat's color is thought to be black because of the discoloration of the corpse after the embalming process which darkened it, and the use of the black tar to seal the bindings which sometimes refers to the fertile soil of the Nile River. Anubis created the first mummy by wrapping up the dismembered corpse of Osiris, therefore, he became the patron god of embalmers.
From then forth, the priest or the individual leading the embalming process during the rites of mummification, wore a jackal headdress to impersonate Anubis, and to worship the god. For most of the Old Kingdom, Anubis was the most important funerary deity. His figure was carved in tomb entrances, to warn off grave robbers at a time when no other deities could be shown in non-royal tombs. Anubis and his army of messengers were charged to punish those who violated tombs or offended the gods. The imagery of a dog, take its origin from the observation of bodies being scavenged from shallow graves by jackals, wild dogs and other carrion eaters who lived on the edge of deserts, digging up shallow buried corpses. To avert this horrible end for their dead and to protect them from such a fate, the early Egyptians manifested Anubis as a dog himself. Then tried to placate Anubis as the dog who swallows millions. From that moment forward, he took other names in connection with his funerary role, such as, he who is upon his mountain. Conjures an image of Anubis watching over the tombs from high escarpments. The Lord of the Sacred Land. Anubis protected elaborate and intricate cemeteries, preserved the bodies of the dead, and guided souls to the afterlife. Referring to his protecting role on the main cemetery sites, Anubis was also known as the foremost of Westerners, because the dead were usually buried on the west bank of the Nile, where the sun sets. Although Anubis does not appear in many myths, he was extremely popular with Egyptians and those of other cultures. The Greeks and Romans for instance identified Anubis as psychopomp, a Greek term meaning guide of souls. An expression they used to refer to their own god Hermes, the messenger of the gods in Greek mythology, who was also a guide of souls in their journey to the underworld. Anubis then started to be referred by the Greeks as Hermanubis, a combined word of Anubis and Hermes, because of the resemblance of their tasks. The god Anubis was often depicted as guiding individuals across the threshold of the living world to the afterlife and was heavily worshipped because he gave people hope, despite modern beliefs. The Egyptians marveled the guarantee that their bodies would be respected at death, and their souls would be protected and justly judged. Another one of Anubis' role was the guardian of the scales. In the Book of the Dead, Anubis is shown in the throne room of Osiris, where he supervised the scales in which the hearts of the dead were weighing against Ma'a, the feather of truth, with Osiris pronouncing judgments. Hearts heavier than Ma'a would be devoured by Amit, and suffer a second death while the lighter ones would ascend to a heavenly existence. Therefore Anubis is sometimes known as the claimer of hearts, and among his duties was to fetch the hearts of the followers of Seth. A story recorded in the first millennium, tells how the wicked god Seth disguised himself as a leopard to approach the body of Osiris. He was seized by Anubis and branded all over with a hot iron. According to the Egyptian myth, Anubis flayed Seth and wore his bloody skin as a warning to anyone who would ever attempt to profane the tombs of the dead. Priests who attended to death rituals wore leopard skin in order to commemorate Anubis's victory over Seth. The legend of Anubis branding the hide of Seth in leopard form was commonly used to explain how the leopards got their spots. Said to be the illegitimate son of Osiris, Anubis remained an important funerary god in the Roman period, but his cult was singled out. This may have been partly because of his popularity with necromancers. Actually, demonic spells explain how to summon Anubis, the keeper of the keys to the underworld. When he appeared, Anubis was used as a go between fetching the spirits of gods and mortals from the underworld to answer the shaman's questions. He also acted as an enforcer of curses, a role that he plays a lot in numerous movies. In the popular culture, Anubis is often portrayed as the sinister god of the dead. He gained popularity through books, video games, and movies franchises where he is given evil powers. But, despite his nefarious reputation, his image is still the most recognizable among the Egyptian gods' pantheon, and will remain in my opinion, quite popular for years to come. If you like the video and enjoy Egyptian mythology, consider leaving a thumbs up, a comment and share.
and don't forget to subscribe as it helps me to keep on uploading content for you guys to enjoy. And turn on the bell so you won't miss anything out. And as always, stay curious.